Professor Clements with you as we consider special relativity and the twin paradox. Uh, so a few of the calculations related to that. Let's take a spacecraft moving at 0.98 times the speed of light towards a star that's 20 light years from Earth. And we're going to break down this calculation into uh, various steps. Um, we only know the number of years that will uh, uh, be required to uh, take this spacecraft to the star and return to Earth. And we'll do this, you know, time elapsing on the clock measured by someone on the Earth who stays at the Earth. So we have the moving spacecraft, a clock in that spacecraft, and we have the person on Earth with their own clock that is at rest. And we're not going to worry about the time to decelerate or accelerate. This would be a hypothetical problem. As soon as the spacecraft gets to the star, then it heads back. Everything's being done at constant speed that's required for special relativity. So we don't have an acceleration uh, uh, as part of the calculation. This is a simplified problem that does relate to uh, special relativity. Well, in doing this, we can still use distance equals rate multiplied by time. We have a distance of 20 light years. The light years, how far uh, light would travel in one year. Our rate will be 0.98 times the speed of light. And in these units, when we divide light years by uh, the speed of light measured in C, we'll get the number of years. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 20 light years. Ly will stand for the light years equals 0 0.98 C is our rate and then our time in years. So we'll do that calculation. Pull out your calculator and uh, follow along with this. 20 divided by 0.98 C. Again, the light years divided by speed of light produce years and that's 20.4 years and this is one way the star is uh, we're going to say is uh, 20 light years from the earth so 20.4 years a little bit longer than light would take because of course our spacecraft cannot travel at the speed of light that's a future uh, topic that uh, we might run across so how long would the round trip take This is one way. We're going to ignore the time to slow down and speed up to come back to the Earth. So we just double this. It'll be 20.4 years coming back. It's the same distance coming back as going out. And we'll have uh, 40.8 years. That's the round trip time for the, uh, 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 for the spacecraft. So this uh, distance here in uh, doing this calculation, you know, we have 20 out years, 0.98 C. This time is the time uh, measured by the Earth observer. So how would we go about calculating the uh, uh, time elapsed on the clock mounted in the spacecraft? How would we make that, uh, that measurement? or that, that calculation. Well, we need gamma. And the gamma number, you should go ahead and calculate this yourself. This gamma number is 5.025. We again get gamma from 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So uh, you should try this on your own. Ask your instructor if you have a question on this. But the uh, gamma value is 5.025. This helps us come up with the value of the uh, uh, elapsed time on the clock. So 40.8 years divided by 5.025. And when you do that, you get, I think, 8.12 years. The person on the Earth will calculate that the clock on the spacecraft advances by 8.12 years and all time advances 8.12 years. The amount that the spacecraft uh, rusts, wears and tears, the uh, any biological activity in the spacecraft including the astronaut that's traveling 
uh, will have aged 8.12 uh, years. So that brings us to our next question here. So this astronaut gets uh, signs up for this trip at age 20, gets on. What's the age of the astronaut when the spacecraft returns to Earth? Well, we would use how much time has elapsed on the moving clock, the moving astronaut. It's 8.12 years for the clock. It's also 8.12 years of biological activity for the astronaut. So we started at age 20. We've got a, a travel time calculated on the Earth of 28.12 years. That's the age of the person, a little bit over 28 years old. Um, person started at age 20. Special relativity tells us that the observer on the Earth watching the spacecraft will only see eight little over eight years advance on the time, both for the clock and for the biological activity of the of the astronaut. So the spacecraft, uh, let's say, leaves the Earth in 2014. What's the year when the spacecraft returns to Earth? What do the Earth clocks read? What's the calendar flip to? What year of the Earth? Well, 2014. And up above, we calculated from the Earth's view, the distance is 40.8 years, the spacecraft traveling at 0.8 C, so 20 years one way, over 40 years round trip. We need to add 40 years to this, uh, this date. So 2054.8 would be the calendar if we left on January 1st, 2014. Um, and this is a little bit amazing. At the uh, how old will the astronaut be? 28 years. And the, if our astronaut was born in 1994, age 20 in 2014, uh, here it is, 2054. The astronaut is age 28. How old would this astronaut's twin be? Well, if the twin was 20 when the astronaut left. From the twin's point of view, 40.8 years have elapsed. The twin will be almost 61 years old. The astronaut twin will only be 28 years old. There's a definite dis difference. And this is uh, the true result. The astronaut, if the astronaut did these calculations at first, the astronaut would get um, a calculation that the um, twin on the Earth is 28 years old and the astronaut is age 60.8 years. But the twin on the spacecraft is doing an illegal calculation. That spacecraft did not stay in a single inertial frame of reference. The spacecraft went out to the distant star in an inertial frame, moving at constant velocity. But at the star, the spacecraft had to leave that inertial frame, had to decelerate, stop, and then get on an inertial reference frame headed back towards the Earth. So that person has changed inertial reference frames. They have an illegal calculation. Um, a person on the Earth stayed in one inertial reference frame and has the correct calculation. The astronaut twin will be younger. Another way that you could work this out, you should, is that the distance to the star is smaller from the point of view of the astronaut on the spacecraft. Um, that distance gets cut down. 20 divided by 5.025, or this would be the round trip distance in light years. And then uh, doing the calculation gets us the uh, uh, correct view that the astronaut is aged less. The astronaut's covering less distance from uh, because that moving link between the Earth and the star is a shorter value. So that's the, uh, the essence of the twin paradox. The Earth's twin has the correct point of view stayed in the inertial reference frame. The astronaut twin has an illegal point of view. They switched inertial, ref that person switched inertial, ref inertial reference frames coming back to the Earth, to get back to the Earth. So ask your instructor about this and perhaps you'll see some other examples of this.